Hello and welcome to Stuff We Play, home of everything weird and retro. A few months back, I took a look at what I believed at the time to be a complete list of all Game Boy Color games that supported the Game Boy Color infrared sensor. It's this little thing at the top of the system that allows for data to be transmitted wirelessly. I go over exactly how it works in that previous video, but it turns out I actually missed a few games. Even after compiling several incomplete lists from around the internet that claim to be complete for that video, my master list still managed to be incomplete in itself. Needless to say, I missed a few games, which is partially why I'm back again talking about this thing here. But before we go over those games, as you probably gathered from the title of this video, yes, you can actually use your Game Boy Color as a TV remote. And it doesn't require any sort of programming or cartridge hacking shenanigans or anything. No, this is something that can be done thanks to an actual officially released game. And it's even one I mentioned in the last vid. That's Mission Impossible for Game Boy Color, a game that I still think isn't worth actually playing. But that's okay, because there's an option in the menus here that will literally let you pair your GBC to a TV and use it as a remote. I mean, technically it doesn't just work with TVs. Like, I'm sure you could pair it with a remote-controlled AC unit or even something like my remote-controlled HDMI switcher here if I wanted to. But wait! Before we do that stuff, I have something else I'd like to get out of the way first. Let's go over all the games I missed in the previous video. And all of these were pointed out by viewers in the comments. See, I do read those things, and I actually really do appreciate it when you point out stuff I missed in videos like this. I even edited a description on that original vid with an addendum, and I'll do the same here if there are even more games I missed. I mean, seeing how much obscure crap came out for the GBC in Japan, I'd be surprised if there aren't at least a couple games I don't know of that supports the IR sensor. Probably the oddest of the IR titles I missed is a game called Dancing Furby. I actually intended to mention this one the last vid, as in I literally had a couple of lines about it in the script, and I really have no idea how it managed to get cut. Anyways, this is a game about, well, dancing Furbies. You know those creepy 90s toys everyone had back in the day? Everyone had one. I'm sure even you did, even if you didn't realize it. What makes this super simple dancing rhythm game notable though, is that it could interact with certain real Furby toys via the IR sensor. I kind of want to track down this game in a compatible Furby just to do a vid on it, because that seems kind of awesome. I wonder if it would have done well if it came out over here as well? Oh, yeah, perhaps the oddest part of Dancing Furby is that it somehow ended up being Japanese exclusive. Speaking of Japanese exclusive stuff, you know how I mentioned Robopon? You know that robotic Pokemon clone with an IR sensor built into the cartridge? So, specifically the version of Robopon we got over here was just Robopon Sun version. But in Japan, there was also Robopon Moon and Star versions as well. Because goodness, Hudson Soft just had to go all the way with ripping off Pokemon here. Also, along with the Game Boy Color Pokemon games being able to connect to the Pokemon Pikachu 2 handheld, there was a game called Sakura Tyson GB that could connect to a similar device called the Pocket Sakura. Oh, side note actually on the topic of Pokemon. Did you know that Pokemon Black, White, Black 2, and White 2 on the DS also use infrared? This functionality was also carried over to all the 3DS Pokemon games as well. It was mainly used for locating battleable players and also to receive special event Pokemon items from certain Nintendo event distributions. Anyways, back to the GBC. So, uh, there's a Xena Warrior Princess game. Remember that show? And you could link it up via IR with the Hercules the Legendary Journeys game to actually unlock the ability to play as Hercules in Xena. Not a half bad feature. Shame the game kind of blows. Data can also be transferred between GBC copies of Perfect Dark, which, by the way, can also communicate with the N64 game via the transfer pack. I've also heard murmurings of support in one of the Donkey Kong Land games, but I wasn't able to test that for this video. One of the craziest games that uses the IR sensor is a Japanese exclusive RPG called Zok Zok Heroes. And this title, you play as a magical girl slash boy with a Power Rangers-esque transformation. The game comes with a peripheral called the Full Changer, that you have to physically swing through the air in specific patterns to activate your Super Sentai forms. And of course, the Full Changer communicates with the GBC via IR. 
Now before we get to the part you've all been waiting for, I have one more game I need to mention. Lego Island 2. Now I love me some Lego Island on PC. Seriously, I played the hell out of the original game. But I never played the second one. And I especially didn't realize it had a GBC port until making this video. And that port is odd for a few reasons. First off, it's the only LEGO Island game on the GBC. Neither LEGO Island 1 or 2002's Island Extreme Stunts saw a release in the system. Second off is the time of its release. The Game Boy Color version of LEGO Island 2 was released the same day as the PC version, the 30th of March 2001. But later that year in October, there was also a Game Boy Advance port. How odd. As for the IR support on the GBC, there are in-game collectible cards that you can trade via IR, and that's it. It's kind of cool, even if it is rather simple. Speaking of collectible cards, you know how Pokemon trading card game on the Game Boy had that really cool card pop feature I kind of really gushed about in the last vid? So it ends up that works differently in international versions of the game than the original Japanese versions. Yeah, it was completely reprogrammed to work with the regular Game Boy Color hardware outside of Japan. The original Japanese version actually had a special chip with IR hardware embedded into it inside the cartridge. It's kind of crazy. But okay, that's enough of that. I think I've gone in depth enough on this underutilized GBC feature again. So now allow me to demonstrate how you can make a TV remote just using your old Game Boy Color and a $5 game. Greetings and welcome to a stuff we play thing. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Anyways, this is just a normal Game Boy Color and that's a me you can see in the reflection. Hi. So, we have a copy of Mission Impossible in there. It has a new battery. And speaking of batteries, we have two standard Energizers, double A's, powering our Game Boy Color. Power it on and try it out with the TV there. And don't mind the mess, I'm cleaning up for the upcoming Game Room Tour video. Let's just wait for it to get past that. And now the Agent Organizer, Remote Control, Okay, so I'm now recording on the couch, partially because the lighting's a little better here, and I'm not sure if you know, so when you have to go through the menus, it, like, the options, like, uh, become a very, very light blue color. It's kind of hard to see, or to see, I should say. But also because we need an actual TV remote to program this thing. So, uh, yeah, we're going to use it with this thing over here. First things first, we're going to press select, and we're going to go... To learn signals, uh, let's do something with the B button, see how it's flashing there a bit. And let's, uh, you know, let's just do that for the power button. Excellent, it stopped flashing. Now, let's press select. Let's go to send signals. And let's turn on the TV. Oh, it's making some sort of response. There we go. We were able to turn it on with the GBC. Gotta have it point like right at it. Goodness. Oh, and now it's not working again, but that's fine. It might not be the best Game Boy uh, remote out there. Like uh, I'm sure you could program a better one using a programmable, ca uh, programmable cart. Definitely not the best TV remote option out there, but it is for sure weird and retro. So on that note, Thank you very much for watching. Stay classy. Uh, feel free to join the Patreon patrons, YouTube channel members, and Twitch subs you see on the screen right now. They get early videos and uh, early podcast episodes and their names in the credits for as low as a dollar a month. Thank you very much for watching. Stay classy. And I'll see you next time.